Good evening. Um, I'm Peter Sirotin, Director of Market Square Concerts, and I'm delighted to welcome you to tonight's concert. Um, I'd like to thank our season sponsors, the Carol DeSoto Foundation, and tonight's concert sponsor, Linda Pheasant, and also special thank you to Eric Forst, professor uh, at Messiah, who uh, let us use his wonderful marimba. Um, when Yateng and I heard the Vesna duo last year at the Chamber Music America conference in New York, we invited them to Harrisburg immediately um, because it's very exciting to find musicians who have something meaningful to add to a 400 year uh, rich musical tradition. And um, new instrumentation, arrangements of old works in a new way, those are the things that keep chamber music alive and culturally relevant. Um, so, you know, when you um, think of Haydn in 1750s, when he started writing music for two violins, viola, and cello, it probably sounded as new to his contemporaries as marimba piano combination sounds to us today. Um, so without um, this experimentation, there is really no development or progress. So I'm really looking forward to introducing you to this remarkable group. Um, this program, that you will hear tonight is featured on Vesna Duo's debut CD, uh, which got rave reviews, certainly much better reception than the premiere of Rite of Spring. Um, but um, all jokes aside, um, Tim Page wrote a wonderful article in Wall Street Journal about them, and um, it's, it's a wonderful recording, and they, we have some uh, copies in the lobby, and the musicians will be available to sign your copy after the concert. I do hope you will join us for our final concert of the season, Stuart and Friends, our annual program, um, on Saturday, April 29th at 7.30 at Market Square Church. And the program will feature music by women composers Rebecca Clark, Amy Beach, and Jennifer Higdon. And now please turn off your cell phones and enjoy the program. Thank you so much for being here tonight. My name is Xenia, and my wonderful pianist here is Liana, and the two of us formed Vesna Duo. Um, we are really excited to share the program with you tonight, and I wanted to tell you about a few things. So, we will reach the destination, but the journey will be in a little bit of a different order, but don't worry, we will tell you all about it as you go along, so you will never be lost on the map of what tonight is happening. Um, we will open the program with the Rite of Spring. Heavy hitter, yes, yes. You can give us a pat on the back later <laughs> for being so brave. Um, and I wanted to share a couple of uh, small things with you. I am sure all I've heard about this audience is that you're very knowledgeable and you, that you love classical music, so thank you so much for it. So if I'm repeating myself and you already know all of this, well, maybe it's not that bad to to sort of remember. Um, as you know, this is a ballet in two acts. In the first act, we will celebrate the earth through this pagan ritual and through just sort of being in touch with it. It turns into this frenzied dance by the end. But we will start with a beautiful dawn where instead of that notorious, very high on the bassoon solo in the beginning, it will be this strange bird, the marimba, that will present the opening. In the second half is where we actually get to select the maiden and then dance her to exhaustion and to death eventually. And uh, one thing, if you, if you, don't, if you ha didn't know, uh, I certainly didn't know this until I delved into the score, um, was that the last four notes that Stravinsky picked for this piece at the very, very end are from bottom up, D, E, A, D. How about that? He was, he was really, really smart on so many levels. So um, 
we will open this with the Rite of Spring. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Peter, to Ya Ping, to Linda Pheasant, and to Eric for providing this wonderful instrument. We're so grateful to be here.
So first act. <laughs> Thank you. A tiny water break for the two uh, maidens who are not supposed to die at the end of tonight. <laughs> So that was all about joyful celebration of the earth, maybe a little bit ecstatic, if you'd okay. agree. Um, and now we move on into nighttime. So you will hear sort of the celestial blanket on top of every single nocturnal creature. And the maidens come out, dance in a circle. One of them pops out, ends up being the chosen one, and then we dance her to exhaustion and prosperity for the rest of the land uh, by just attacking her with a bunch of mixed meter, as you know, uh, at the <laughs> very end. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> Here we go, second act.
The next piece is a surprise. It's not on the program. We just arranged it uh, recently. It's a piece from my country. I'm from Republic of Georgia. And uh, we have this famous, uh, it's protected by UNESCO, uh, dance form called Horumi. Can you guys say that? Horumi, one, two, three. Horumi. There we go. Horumi is in all odd meters. And funny enough, it's actually a war dance. And being it in odd meter makes it unpredictable, right? What I mean by odd meter is in groups of threes and twos, and sometimes it flips to twos and threes. So it will go one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, or one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. So it makes it odd meters. And the story, the main theme of this dance usually is um, Hero is trying to protect his family, his land uh, against the enemy. So he seeks out the enemy in his land. And there is a great battle, and there is a glorious victory. So I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> it's written by Mary Davitashvili. She's a female, uh, uh, female composer from Republic of Georgia. She's no longer with us. But she's known for um, her film scores. They're written for a majority of the movies that came out of Republic of Georgia in the 40s and 50s. I hope, the, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I like to also give a preface that um, I thought because I am from Serbia and we are not uh, strangers to odd meter that I could, as the young say, hang um, as this thing uh, happens. But sometimes you will see me lose the battle, um, especially because we rehearsed this for the first time only a couple of days ago. So if you see steam coming out of my ears, that's because I'm counting and I'm hoping I make it to the end. <laughs>
as a little intermission, but not really. As a, as a break, because this is the only, we realize this is the only slow piece we have on the program. Yes. We should arrange more. <laughs> yeah, we should arrange more we'll things that don't attack this. your ears. <laughs> <laughs> but we would like to play a second period by George Gershwin that we arranged for, for us. <laughs> Now we will bring you back into the fire. Um, we move on to Piazzolla. As you probably have noticed by now, we really like classical music. That's, again, as the young would say, duh. But uh, we also really like folk music, and we really like jazz. And there are all these elements that you can hear in every single piece in our program including in the coming that is Piazzolla. And we all know already that Piazzolla spent a lot of time in New York and that wonderful tango that comes from his culture, he blended with the sounds of New York, which again, I think that's one of my favorite combinations is, is jazz and tango. So here goes the death of the angel.
Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We are so, so grateful that we get to share this beautiful music with you. And thank you for being so enthusiastic and laughing at my bad jokes. I really, really appreciate it. Um, the last piece that we are going to play for you tonight is our cover, because this is a, a jazz tune, of an Avishai Cohen song. This song is called The Ever Evolving Etude. And I remember the first time I heard it about 15 years ago, I could not figure out, and I'm a percussionist, I could not figure out what's going on at all in terms of rhythm. It is like a sort of rhythmic mirage, and I challenge you if this happens to be in your vocabulary or you have um, enough uh, sort of music education behind you in your back pocket to try to figure out what the time signature is, meaning how, where should you clap? That's, that's it. Um, it. It took me 15 years, and uh, in year 15, I downloaded the music, and then I saw it. So um, I wish you better luck than what I had. But here is Abishai Cohen's Ever Evolving Etude.
much. You're so generous with your applause. Come say hi in the lobby, please. We want to see your beautiful faces and tell us what was your favorite part and what should we not play anymore. <laughs> Thank you.